Hello, uh, I'm Andrei, CTO of Copter Express, and today we will tell you about appli uh, educational application of PX4 platform. I will tell you about our company and the power of drones in education. Uh, I'm Alexey Shlikov, I'm CEO of Copter Express, and I'll tell you about our community, our competitions, and uh, our students' projects. Uh, hello, I'm Alek. Uh, I'm the lead developer in Copter Express, and I'm going to tell you more about uh, the technical approach we have chosen for our software framework. Before we begin our presentation, we would like to make a small spoiler. Uh, we now will start a conference call with Kazan, Russia, where on a uh, competition which is called Russian uh, Robotics Olympiad, our drone kits are used uh, by children uh, to compete with each other. So please see what's going on. It's live stream. Uh. <laughs> Something goes wrong. <laughs> so, can so, we again? Now we have a Wi Fi. Yes, everything. One more time. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay, so a few words about this competition. It's a robotics competition for school students uh, and students from all over the Russia now are in Kazan and uh, they compete for uh, who can program autonomous flight with drone better. And our platform use PX4 and it's uh, PX, so PX4 is leading platform in these competitions. And I hope we will show you how it uh, works in real life. Okay, then we begin our presentation and maybe we will call again. Later, yes. Okay, okay so our company uh, was founded in 2013 in Moscow, Russia. Uh, we are called Copter Express because our primary goal was to start uh, commercial delivery of goods with drones. Uh, so in 2014, the first pilot project was started, uh, the delivery of pizza in Russian city of Siktivkar. Uh, this uh, project was a great success as an advertising campaign. Uh, it was first regular commercial delivery with drones and media uh, all over the world told about us and about this delivery of pizzas with drone in northern Russian city. Uh, this project lasted about, for about a month and uh, it was successful as advertising campaign but not so uh, from economical and legal sides because the delivery were, <laughs> were quite <laughs> expensive. And Russian laws uh, wasn't ready for such a use of UAVs. Uh, so uh, then uh, we started to think, how can we make delivery better and cheaper? And we realized that piloted delivery, and this was piloted, uh, is not the way to go. And we started to work on autonomous flights and autonomous delivery. And in 2016, in Samara, we started our first autonomous delivery project using uh, the drone on P Pixhawk Autopilot with APM firmware and Raspberry Pi single board computer. Uh, we programmed it to fly uh, from point to point and then recognize Aruka tag, its marker-like QR code, and then land precisely on this market. Uh, so we are working on autonomous delivery uh, nowadays too, uh, but also now we work on uh, some other projects with autonomous drones, like uh, our autonomous monitoring solutions. Uh, we decided to add uh, the automatic charging station to our drone system, uh, so drone can be programmed to m perform flights by some time of schedule uh, and without any attendance. So this system uh, can work fully autonomously for quite a long time. 
but of course, uh, uh, there, is some, uh, there are some problems with autonomous drones, reliability concerns, and now we are on uh, pilot project stage of this development. We just completed the uh, first su successful pilot project when this station uh, was used without our attendance uh, for several weeks in an oil production site in Russia. Uh, so that's our short story of our company uh, as industrial drone builder. Uh, but in 2015, uh, in Russia, the interest uh, in robotics have risen. And we set our eyes on educational market. Um, uh, that time in Russia, both state and private educational institutions were eager to introduce some course on robotics as part of their curriculum. Uh, so we started to develop the uh, educational drone kit and started to think, how can we use drones in education? Uh, there are several approaches to drones in education. Uh, first and the most obvious is to use a ready-to-fly drone, some kind of small drone to teach uh, students how to pilot drone, uh, how to program it. But it's in the same time the least interesting and powerful way of using drones because we can teach how to engineer the drone and students can't realize how drone really work. Uh, so uh, some time ago, special educational products uh, like modular drones uh, were offered. A modular drone is a drone which meant specifically for education and consists of several parts, like one part is ESC plus motor plus prop, and then students can, assem can assemble this drone uh, and uh, pilot it uh, so they uh, can get a bit more information about how drone works, but they still can't go to the shop, buy real parts, and assemble a real large drone and found some kind of very cool startup with drone. Uh, so the most powerful but the most complicated way of using drones for education uh, is to provide the drone as kit of common parts, which can be assembled by students, uh, and so they will have to realize how drone really work, uh, and then they have to configure it uh, to pilot or program it. Uh, so we decided to go with the last approach as the most powerful and providing the most opportunities for us to use drones in education. Uh, but we wanted to uh, teach not only, not only how to fly using remote control, we wanted to teach how to program the drones so they could fly autonomously. And so we are entering the field of robotics and robotics education. And robotics is not the easiest uh, thing to teach because it's very young field and it advances very quickly. So it's very interesting because of that. But at the same time, uh, the educational materials are somewhat lacking. Uh, for example, if you compare uh, documentation of ROS with docs for some kind of modern, popular, stylish JavaScript framework. Uh, JavaScript docs are like almost digested information which you could consume really entertaining. And ROS documents are just like raw food and you really need to want it to eat. So we thought, how can we uh, provide something that will be powerful and that will be close to real adult robotics. But at the same time, uh, that will be user-friendly, so we, can, we could teach like 12 years old students how to use it. Uh, so we had three alternatives. We could uh, just not to use complicated tools and make some kind of simple platform so students could understand it. Uh, or we could uh, create some kind of wrapper which would hide the complexity of the uh, com uh, complicated tools uh, so children could use it. Or the third way is to create documentation so awesome, so brilliant that even school children uh, could uh, understand how all of this works. We decided to go with uh, some mix of the second and the third approaches. Uh, so we developed our educational drone kit. 
our educational drone kit is a, a kit to assemble a programmable quadcopter like this. Uh, so we call it clever kit. And not only because you can make these drones really clever, but also because clever in Russian is the word for clover. Yeah, it's pronounced clever. Uh, and four-leaf clover is not only the uh, symbol of happiness and luck, but also it uh, resembles the quadcopter. So we call it clever. And we ship it at a uh, kit or fully unassembled, just parts. So teachers can educate children how to build quadcopter, how to configure it, how to fly using remote control, and then how to program autonomous flight. Uh, talking about hardware, we needed to build the drone so it wouldn't be too expensive, but it should be very tough because students like crashing the drones like crazy very much. Uh, so we built a frame uh, which is partly carbon and very tough, and par uh, the protection parts are all of acrylic glass, which can be very, very cheaply cut on the laser cutter, so we can provide them for almost no price. Uh, uh, no. Uh, talking about software, uh, we had two primary goals. On the one hand, we needed to provide some kind of simple API so students could quickly uh, start to program these drones. And on the other hand, we needed to provide some <laughs> kind of, <laughs> some kind of uh, navigational systems for indoor flights, because uh, when you use drone outdoor, you of course could use GPS, but uh, the, of course the ma majority of uh, lectures and lessons are indoor in schools, so we needed to create some kind of indoor navigational system. And the third but crucial part of our kit is our documentation. And, uh, oh, it's, oh, okay, <laughs> uh, please, previous slide. Uh, yeah, uh, the interesting question for this conference is why we chose PX4 as our autopilot uh, and PX4 flight stack. Uh, to create educational drone, you need your autopilot to be flexible because you need to use it in uh, different educational institutions. Uh, to be uh, uh, feature full, uh, to have some features like low level control or indoor navigation support, which we need for education. But in the same time, it should be simple because students uh, should know, uh, learn how it works. It also should be stable and mature, so students uh, doesn't face any problems regarding our platform itself and not their knowledge. And they should, uh, the autopilot should have large community uh, because uh, the community can help us and students with any problems and develop this firmware further. Uh, so we evaluated all the uh, uh, available firmwares when we created our platform. And in fact, PX4 is the third platform which we used. We used CC3D with Arduino some years ago. And then for a very brief moment, we used APM flight stack, but moved quickly to PX4 and quite happy with it. Uh, <laughs> so, the uh, third and very, very important part of our educational product is our documentation. Uh, we wrote a large volume of documentation which covers all the topics that students need to know to assemble the drone, to configure it, to uh, upload firmware, to set it up, to fly using remote control, to communicate with Raspberry Pi, to uh, make a scripts to fly autonomously. Uh, and this documentation is available at our website. Uh, our main version of documentation is in Russian because almost all of our students are Russian speaking and many of them even don't know English well enough to read it because they are like 12 years old. We translated this documentation to English uh, so you can check it out. Yes, and uh, now I want to tell you more about our community that we create uh, in four years. Uh, at first, first of all, I want to show you this map. 
is each place mark is one of center of STEM education or school or college in Russia where you can learn something using our educational drone kit. From Kaliningrad to Sakhalin, across Russia, it's very exciting. And we made it in four years. Uh, and what looks uh, uh, past for the student right now? Uh, we will tell about it with, an, uh, with Andre uh, from two sides. The first, about science and education. And the second one, uh, the second part, uh, about uh, competitions and um, uh, different uh, contests and uh, benefits that they can uh, have with our educational drone kit. But first of all, we uh, make some work and we're ready to call. Uh, we, we will call to Russian Robotics Olympiad. It's, uh, right, it's uh, right now. And uh, thank you, Ramon. He helped us. And... Uh, yes. Oh, yes, it's work. Finally. Oh. Hello, everybody. My name is Peter. <laughs> and um, today we are located in Indianapolis at the Polish University in Kazan, Russia. Uh, we are provide a flying robotic challenge. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, the main task of this challenge is uh, to develop drone and perform full autonomous flight. We have uh, 10 teams. Uh, we have uh, 10 teams from 10 uh, regions in Russia. Uh, this is uh, students uh, from 8 uh, to 11 grade, and most of them use our educational drone kit with our image for Raspberry Pi. So, uh, I wish uh, good luck to our... Oh. Thank you, Sveta. Yes. Bye. Uh, yes? Yes, and now about past of students in Russia. Let's start from school. Yeah, let's discuss what we can teach uh, using drones uh, in schools. The most obvious thing uh, that students can learn is how to assemble and fly the drone. And usually that's where the school education with drone ends. Uh, but in fact, we can use drones to teach uh, a whole set of different uh, common subjects, like, for example, physics, uh, uh, topics like aerodynamics or electricity uh, can be covered uh, using drone kits. Uh, and it's interesting for students, uh, but physics is not the only subject which we can uh, teach with drones because we also have design and engineering classes. And children are really excited to make some part for drone instead of uh, making some boring, unnecessary parts. And when they should make something to complete a task, for example, when drone must grip an object and then drop it somewhere in the room, and they must uh, uh, make the tool to grip, it's much more interesting for them, and they uh, do this with great interest. But the most interesting application, uh, as we think of drones in school education, is computer science classes, because uh, common computer science lessons are usually not too interesting for students, and if student is not really a computer fan, uh, they, don't, uh, they are not very useful. But everything changes when you propose to code a drone because almost all the students are really excited to program the drones and they uh, are thinking like, what, I can write some code as this drone will execute my commands, it will navigate through the room, it will, it will grip and uh, 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 drop objects, it will fight another drone. It's really, really very exciting for students, so uh, it's the most interesting for us application of educational drones. And now when the uh, interest in, for programming is very high, we believe that uh, schools should use drones for computer science education more and more. And what benefits uh, they can learn when they're using drones? First of all, they can join in university with full scholarship if they win in different contests in Russia. 
For example, uh, this video from different uh, competitions, one of them to deliver something fully autonomous way, and students from 30 to 15 years take part in it. And the winner can uh, join uh, university without exams. And uh, it's really interesting for students because they can make their first step in flying robots. And it's not so hard, and it's very simple, and they have a lot of benefits. But then they uh, can join college, for example, and make drones like a profession. Uh, yeah, colleges are more about working professions. So we participated uh, in creation of new uh, Russian state educational standard, which we called uh, unmanned aerial systems operating. Uh, using our educational solutions, colleges teach how to operate the drone, how to fix and maintain troubleshoot it. And it's both interesting for college students uh, and interesting then for the, their employers. Yes, uh, and the competition uh, take a big part in uh, students' life because uh, if they win in this competition, they can find uh, the best job. Is Russia is, in Russia, it's a very powerful tool, uh, World Skills Movement. It's championship of working profession. It's an international championship. And uh, in Russia, the, uh, uh, the best students who win in this competition can find the best job because uh, it's, uh, this competition is interesting for companies and for students. It, it, ca it can connect them each other. And it's more about working profession, uh, more about drone operating. Uh, for example, uh, on uh, this competition, you should troubleshooting your drone, you should uh, flying uh, in FPV, and uh, flying fully autonomous. You can show your knowledge of drone from different sites. And uh, it's really interesting for uh, students to try to make it. But uh, this only if you want to be an operator of drone. But science is more interesting, uh, and you can use drone in it, in university. Uh, yeah, our work with universities is um, in, in early stage now, uh, but we really believe that drones should be used more in universities because you can use them both for education and for scientific research. Uh, so, uh, talking about education, drones can be used with great success uh, to teach estimation and control theory, computer vision, uh, some machine learning aspects, and uh, a lot of different topics. Uh, and if we uh, talk about research, then researchers usually spend a lot of their time and effort uh, to assemble the drone, to learn how to operate it before they can start really scientific work. So uh, we believe that uh, there is a need for some kind of platform which can be used for scientific research in universities. Uh, and we are now promoting our kids in Russia and are collecting the feedback from academic uh, community uh, so we could offer the best platform for research. And what's about interesting competition for uh, students and uh, tutors? Uh, it's, uh, I think uh, most of all, no uh, conference IROS. It's a big robotics conference uh, each year, uh, and uh, uh, this year we will organize a competition in this conference, and I hope to see someone of you. It will uh, 6 November in Macau. It's about collaborative drone delivery, of course, fully autonomous, and I hope uh, we can show the power of PX4 at this uh, competition uh, and to use it. But, you know, uh, the main uh, point why, we, why there is so many students in Russia love to use drones for programming, it's our community. Uh, you can join community in each step, in school, in college, in university, and uh, it's interesting uh, all the time. Uh, and when you came to our community, uh, there is a lot of people who want to help you. Because, uh, you know, when we start, we answer it, and each question for ourselves. But right now, people want to, uh, to help each other because it's, um, people like to share their knowledge and we just need to uh, give them a platform for discussion. And for example, in one of our chats, there is Ramon. Yes, <laughs> yes and I believe that we can communicate uh, 
a lot and uh, show the best uh, projects from Russia and uh, to cooperate with drone code. Yes, and uh, our team is core of this community. Uh, we start uh, with uh, seven employees in uh, four years ago, and now we grow to 70. Uh, we create an educational materials. We develop our uh, framework. We uh, organize competition, uh, helps to students and tutors. And um, it's very inspiring when you uh, meet someone who uses your uh, educational drone kit in every uh, city in Russia. And uh, for us, it's very important uh, that teachers not only uh, learn to assemble drone and learn to fly, because it's very important that they use drone as a tool to uh, learn physics, computer science, and others. And that's why we, uh, make, we educate teachers. Uh, it's a very important part of our concept. Uh, for example, last year, we educate more than 100 teachers from uh, 26 cities from Russia. And, uh, but it's not only in Russia, because uh, this year, uh, at the beginning of May, there was a very interesting uh, experiment. We go to China and uh, learn Chinese uh, teachers from college. Uh, with our conception of using drones in education. It was uh, very cool and very interesting for us uh, because it uh, was our first step uh, to international, uh, to join international community of uh, educational drones. And uh, drones interesting not only uh, in education, it's, uh, all, all, it's uh, useful for our business too. Yeah, as Alexei told you, uh, our small startup grew from 7 to 70 employees in several years. And that's because of success uh, of our educational product. Uh, our sales grew, so now we uh, sell more than 1,000 of these kits per year. And, uh, but we are not the only uh, manufacturer of educational kits in Russia. In fact, there is uh, a lot of more of them. And the question is, uh, what uh, could help us to step aside and to dominate the market? When we created our kit, uh, uh, we discussed a lot internally about should we open source all of our software? Because, uh, of course, uh, many, many uh, businessmen are afraid that if they share their code, somewhere, someone will... Uh, come in and stole their wo hard work, yeah, and uh, will offer the product which is uh, uh, more or less the same, but for less price because they doesn't have to develop it. Uh, but we decided that we couldn't create a great educational product without creating a community around it. And we couldn't create a community without going fully open source. So we decided to uh, license under MIT all of our software and to open all of our educational materials. Uh, that allowed us to uh, very quickly expand uh, our vision uh, on the educational platform and uh, to collect a lot of very smart and brilliant people around us. Uh, so uh, from one side, yes, there is some uh, manufacturers who copy our product, but they can't achieve any success in the market because uh, they don't have any community to help teachers to educate teachers to help students, and also they uh, don't have our expertise in field of uh, copters and drones, so their hardware is inferior as well. Uh, and to confirm what uh, I said, I want to show you the market share of our company and another uh, manufacturers of educational drone kits in the Russian market. So uh, we now uh, are more than half of Russian educational market, and all of our competitors uh, use closed source model. So they publish only some kind of API. And we went fully open source, and it uh, enabled us uh, to dominate this market in Russia. So we would recommend you 
to open source as much as you can if you are working in similar field because the advantages of uh, such approach uh, are far, far uh, more important than the risks that you can have. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our software framework. The goals of our software framework were actually to lower the barrier of entry to the world of flying robotics, especially to the world of uh, open source flight controllers like uh, PX4. Um, when we're talking about the software that runs uh, on the uh, companion computer, uh, there are two main approaches how you can uh, do it. Uh, the first approach is to create uh, some library-based solution like drone, uh, like drone kit or PyMav link or something like this. It has some advantages because it's very easy to the users. Uh, they just import some Python model in their code. It's very easy. But another approach is to do inter-process communication uh, approach uh, like ROS and MAVROS. It has and it has a lot of a lot of advantages. Uh, at first, uh, there are great introspection and debugging tools uh, like RQT in ROS and the ROS topic, and, and, and etc. Uh, also, um, you can do some very nice visualization like RVs. Uh, um, also, uh, there's a lot of logging solutions like ROS back. So, uh, we think that the most appropriate, uh, appropriate variant for us is to use ROS and MAVROS. Uh, the, se the second topic for us is uh, the positioning system because it's very uh, it's very difficult to program drone to do something uh, sensible without uh, the posi position system. So of course, uh, outdoor you can use GPS and uh, PX4 uh, works uh, really nice with uh, GPS. But we don't want to make our students go outside every time they want to test their code. So. In a lab, of course, you can use um, something like motion capture system. It can, it can give you very, uh, very good uh, precise, precise precision. But uh, for educational purposes, it's too expensive. It costs a lot. So the most appropriate uh, solution for us is to use the on onboard camera-based navigation. We have a Raspberry Pi and the camera. So we developed two solutions to navigate indoors. The first is recognizing fiducial markers. So we can uh, compute the position of our drone relative to the marker or to group of markers. We call them markers map. And then we can use this information to navigate. Uh, the second um, solution is optical flow. We just use the standard OpenCV's um, uh, phase correlation method. And then we can uh, compute the shift uh, between two frames that camera sees then we can uh, transform this shift to the angle, and then we pass this information to the flight controller. So this works really, really well on Raspberry Pi, so our drone can just hover. Of course, it may be a little drifting, but it, it's hovering. Uh, then uh, the next topic is uh, flying it off-board, because uh, of course you can use automation uh, to fly autonomously, but for indoor, indoor flies, it's very limited. Uh, the only thing it can, it can do, it uh, just uh, flies uh, through points, so it's limited. It's not um, uh, fits uh, some fun tasks. So flying enough board is not so easy for our students. For example, if you try uh, to write some sketch uh, for raw Mavros to, to just take off, then it would be look like this. So our students uh, should understand a lot of difficult concepts of ROS, like uh, publishers, subscribers, uh, callbacks, it's too difficult for novice programmers. So we actually decided to create a simple wrapper around it, and we called it Simple Offboard. So Simple Offboard is just a ROS node. Uh, it wraps some uh, MavROS stuff. And uh, this is the project template for our students. So Simple Offboard is just an eight services, and they allow the user to uh, make different tasks and control the drones at different levels, uh, on the level of position, rates, velocity. So, for example, the program that takes off looks just like this. It's just one line of code. So our students uh, write li uh, one line of code, and the drone will take off and hover using optical flow. So, as you see, navigate uh, function has uh, the target point coordinates. Uh, it has frame ID. The frame ID is actually a coordinate frame for the target points. For the target points. Uh, it's uh, just a regular ROS frame, like you know in Mavros' base link, which is attached to the drone, 
or map, which is attached to the origin of a local coordinate system. But we also added another frame that we called uh, body. Body is just like a baseline frame, but it's not tilt by roll and pitch, so it's very easy to control the drone in terms of fly forward, right, left, and something like this. Also, thanks to uh, Ross uh, toolchain, uh, this uh, can be performed just in one bash uh, line. So we just call the same navigate service and pass the same uh, parameters to it, and the drone will take off, so you can even program your drone using bash scripts. Then, uh, for example, if you want your drone, your drone to fly left, then you just say, set Y uh, coordinates to, uh, to 2, for example, and Y axis is uh, points to the left, so the drone will fly left. Then, when you, uh, when you want your drone to fly uh, on its initial position, then you set Y to minus 2, and the drone will, will return. Then, uh, when you want to, for example, land, we created a very simple uh, thing. You just call land service, and don't, don't care about anything, it just uh, switch the drone to auto land mode and the drone will land. So this is uh, some example of a program you can do. Uh, this, uh, you he here you see the drone uh, flies square and uh, you see how easy is the program. You just called navigate four times, you just sleep until the drone reaches the target position. So it's re really easy and fun for our students. Also, uh, when you enable uh, Aruka recognition system on our platform, uh, each Aruka marker will create its own coordinate frame. So if the drone sees the marker, you can actually uh, navigate to the target point relative to the marker which it sees. So like in this example, we set frame ID to Aruka underline 107, and the drone sees the marker and navigates and hover above it. Uh, moreover, uh, with the same line of code, you can even uh, make your drone to fly towards the moving marker, like in this video. So this is just one line of code. Um, uh, so this is using optical flow system, but optical flow system has some feature. The drone may, uh, may drift away because optical flow only computes the velocity, but all, there is a system that is called Swiss Position Estimation, uh, then uh, you can uh, use a map of markers. Then you input this map to our configuration file, file and then uh, our system will uh, c uh, calculate the position of the drone relative to this, uh, to this map. And you can fly relative to the ma map of the markers. This, this would create an Aruka map, markers, uh, Aruka map uh, frame. So like in this example, drone flies to the left edge of the marker map, then it flies to the middle of the marker map, and then it lands. Uh, okay, uh, now the next simple example that we can use to teach something uh, our students is uh, this program makes the drone flies a circle. Uh, this program is very interesting for education purposes because with this, uh, our students can understand the application of sine function, cosine functions, and geometry functions. In, so they can program to drone uh, to do something interesting using this math, math function. Also, uh, when uh, you want to get the state of your, uh, of your drone, you don't need to subscribe to the topics. You just call get telemetry service. Uh, this service gets frame ID as an input and gives you everything about your drone you need uh, as an answer. So the frame ID is the coordinate frame for X, Y, and Z coordinates. Also, it has attitude, uh, rates of the drone. So, for example, if the drone sees a marker, then you can set frame ID to Aruk under underline the ID of this marker, and you know uh, the coordinates of the drone relative to the marker if it sees the marker. So it's very useful. So this is the example how it, sees, how it looks in Python. You just call the function and get all the telemetry. Because subscribers is maybe too, too difficult to, to analyze. Then uh, it's a lower level control on our platform. You also can set the desired velocity, set the desired attitude, and set rates. Uh, this is useful for some aggressive maneuvers. Uh, for example, this is the code that, that um, performs a flip with the drones. As you see, it's very easy. Uh, you just uh, bump up uh, for a little time. 
then you set a rotating rate for your drone, then you wait until the conditions are met, and then you just return your drone to the position control mode. And uh, this is how looks the, uh, the execution of this program. So the drone uh, takes off, and then it uh, performs a flip, then it's returned to its initial position and lands. Now, we don't want to distribute our platform for our students as just uh, packages or ROS packages because installing ROS packages and building ROS packages is not so easy. So we decided to create an image for Raspberry Pi so our, our students can just get this image and write it to SD card. But we don't build this uh, Raspberry Pi image manually. Instead, we have a continuous integration system that uses Cameo emulator to emulate Raspberry Pi. Then we um, install everything you need, mount a Raspbian image, configure network, so every out drone is a Wi-Fi access point, uh, install a ROS kinetic, and some additional software. For example, we have this web interface. Uh, when you get the links to all the web tools that are available on our platform, for example, you can view the documentation, you can view some interesting visualization, also, many of our users use Windows, so we have a web, web terminal. So you even using Windows, you can program your drone just using web browser, and it will be a real programmer. It's, not like, it's, it's real uh, command line, so you, you learn, you learn uh, really cool stuff. Uh, this is a nice uh, package that is called uh, Web Video Server, so you can view uh, all the image topics that you have. For example, you can view the image from your camera, and we actually build this image uh, to each commit uh, on our project, and we run tests, so if something fails, we know about it. And how you see there, uh, all, the, so, all the stuff I uh, tell you about is just hosted on GitHub, it's Copter Express slash Clever, so uh, you can uh, follow it, you can check it out, you can uh, run it, uh, you can, if you can please start it, if you like, so this was a brief summary about our software platform. And now Alexei will tell you about actual projects that was created using this platform. Thank you. Uh, yes, and uh, I want to tell you about three most interesting projects that can show our platform from three uh, points of view. The first one is Drone Show. Uh, it's very popular in Russia school camps because you can make it very fast with our simple uh, framework. And uh, it's very exciting first step in robotics because you create something interesting. For example, this video made this week on Monday. Uh, it's a show from school camp where five full autonomous drones makes flip. Flip? One more time, flip. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> yes, uh, and yeah, it uh, look very exciting for them because uh, they understand why navigation indoor is so hard and how to create a control server to uh, control all of these drones. The second project is about warehouse inspection. Team of students uh, want to uh, they have uh, they find a problem that it's. Uh, it takes a lot, a, bit, a lot of time to scan all barcodes, and they want to try to make it with a uh, drone. They take our educational drone kit and our framework and uh, make this project. And the most interesting part is that these students are only 13 years old, and they can create it by themselves. Uh, it's fantastic because, uh, you know, three years ago it was a problem even for us. Uh, and. Uh, the third project is very inter interesting because uh, it's, um, it shows how important to work with students and interns. Uh, two students came to us uh, in our internship program. And they, at first they assemble drone, then they start to learn to fly. But it was catastrophic. They crash every time. They fly two seconds and then repair drone for an hour. But then they think, huh, we're not so good at piloting, but we are great engineers. Uh, maybe it's not only a way to learn to fly. We can create a sphere protection around our drone. Then they make this first prototype. Uh, it, it works, and then they make the second version. 
Uh, they use uh, carbon tubes in the second version. It was very interesting. And Ray, second version. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, uh, and it works, and they fly a lot of times. They crash in the walls, in, in the, uh, they crash with uh, big high, and drone is okay. Then they write an article, uh, and it became very popular in Russia. We was very inspired by it, and make uh, a product. Yes, you can see it, or like, uh, already uh, turn it on. Uh, it's a drone for delivering something indoor. Uh, and uh, we use it at a lot of raw action, you can see. Uh, for example, we, we, we usually deliver sweets with this drone because uh, we upgrade it and make uh, a cover of textile cover around our drone. And it's very hard to touch props. And it's almost uh, fully safety to fly uh, through the people. And we more more than 20 PR events using this drone, and uh, it was very exciting. For example, it's a delivery of water to speaker. We also deliver a clicker and uh, a lot of uh, other things. And the main point in this project is uh, that how student project became a product of our company. Uh, and because for us it's very important to take the most uh, the most smart uh, students uh, came to our uh, internship program and uh, create some projects. And uh, now uh, we create even you know it's a funny competition like drone wars. You take two drones like this and you should crash, and someone who can fly, he's win. And uh, it's more, uh, it's very exciting to people who see it uh, from the side because, but it's not uh, good for engineers because they, they should repair drone every time. Uh, and uh, now uh, our platform is very good for projects. And every year we make a big event uh, in Russia. It's Copter Hack. Uh, we, uh, uh, do you remember that we, educate teachers. And then, once a year, we call all teachers, all students that use our educational platform in Moscow. And, uh, for example, last year there was 200 of participants, and they make some interesting projects on our hackathon. They have only 24 hours, our educational drone kit, and then can make all, uh, all they want. Uh, to add the sound sensors, to add the, some uh, different nodes as they want. And uh, for us, it's very inspiring to meet uh, people and hear their story. How they use our drone, what projects, how they educate students, and uh, how they use uh, our uh, project. And uh, at the end, I want to tell you... Uh, so how we taught a thousand students how to program drones? You know, uh, there is a three main point. The first one is uh, that uh, we make an easy framework, a really simple fra framework. And first step to flying robotics is very simple. You need only one day to assemble drone, learn. Uh, make your first fly and make, first your, uh, make your first autonomous fly. And it's very important that we use PX4 and ROS uh, because our platform is very simple, but it has a big potential to go deeper. You can start from our platform and then understand how PX4 works, what ROS is, at, and many other things. The second one, because students have benefits. It's uh, very important because uh, for students it's interesting with a practical way. Uh, they can, for example, join university with a scholarship, uh, just you, uh, make interesting project with drone. And the third point that um, we create a big community in Russia. And when you start to program drone, it's very important to talk to another people who. Uh, who making something interesting with drones too, because it's very inspiring when you talk with, with someone online and then see this person 
offline, in competitions, in contests, uh, at hackathons and uh, other different events, you know, uh, like us here. Uh, and uh, we take these three simple, uh, three parts, simple fra framework, benefits, and uh, our uh, community. Take them together and taught a thousand students to program drones. Yeah, but we've made all this way from Moscow, not only to share our story, but to promote the usage of educational drones in schools, in colleges, at all the stages of the education. Because the drone is the wonderful tool which can educate and inspire students at the same time. And I believe now we need uh, more than ever a lot, of, uh, a lot of inspired and talented engineers and developers. Uh, so go to schools, to colleges, and inspire people with drones because it's a really, really, absolutely motivating thing. And I believe that in a few years, when we will meet again at some summit, uh, many participants will say, you know, I started to work with drones at school, and I love them. Thank you. Thank you. Ah. I'm, I'm so and I'm sorry, can oh, you please awesome. uh, make this for our colleagues from Russia? One moment. Yes. Wait, please. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions from the audience? Please. Please raise your hands. So usually how long is your hackathon? Like one day, 24 hours? Uh, it's usually uh, from 24 to, 80, uh, to 48 hours. So it's the whole day with the night work, you know, or it's even two days. So if we were to do another Dev Summit in the future, should there be a hackathon? <laughs> Would you like? Uh, maybe some kind of developer's workshop, you know? <laughs> Yes, maybe we can do it together. Maybe we can uh, maybe we wait a year for our hackathon, maybe this year. Let's make it together. Yeah, with drone code. Hackathon this. attracts a lot of interest and a lot of people were into the world of drones be because of hackathon. Actually, me, for example. <laughs> so ask the audience here to raise your hand if you are interested in that portion to add that to a Dev Summit. <laughs> oh, great. Oh. We, well, uh, we're waiting each of you. We, we want very hackathon. much to make international hackathon next time, so it would be really great. Who's next? Uh, just a two-part quick question. Uh, so how much do the drone kits cost, and what are your plans for expansion internationally? Uh, our drone kits uh, cost about uh, $700. Dollars uh, and uh, yes, we are planning to expand, and we are slowly expanding into Chinese market and, and into Chile market uh, to United Arab Emirates market. Uh, for example, there was an interesting project where uh, students from Aachen, uh, Netherlands, uh, take our drone and uh, pro uh, take a part in uh, some competition. I forget the name. But uh, it was very interesting for us. Yes. All right. So, two questions. Um, first, what's the flight time? Oh, it's uh, from 8 minutes to 12 or 15 minutes. It depends what, uh, how many of payload on the drone. All right. Quite long. And uh, which version of uh, Raspberry Pi was used? Uh, model 3, plus, uh, 3B+. Plus. So that's quite some computing power. Thank you. Uh, have you uh, looked into maybe integrating with Microsoft Make Code or any kind of Blockly language to make this um, relevant to even younger users? You mean Scratch oh, yes. or something? Yeah. Yes, we have a Scratch. This platform is very um, extensible. So our students created a Scratch addition to it. We are thinking about adding this to the main. Uh, platform, maybe we add, but now it can be installed, but it's not so easy, but it can be added because of extensible nature of ROS platform and uh, enterprise communication platform. platform. So I saw that you have a lot of schools in Russia that are using it. How do, do the schools finance the, the kits? Is it 
financed by the government or is it uh, single schools? Uh, it depends. Mostly, it's, uh, they, uh, you know, the school can buy uh, it with the government money. Or, and they buy all that they have with government money. And uh, they buy our educational drone kit to learn some subjects, for example, and to take part in competition because schools are interested in competition in Russia. Uh, how many... Th- Money, how, how many they have money, is depends uh, of result in competition of students too. Thank you. There's a hand. And for those uh, seven hundred dollars, do you get um, or what do you get? Is the drone and ah yes, you get uh, the drone and uh, all the parts of drone and uh, for example if you stem educational center you have uh, free uh, educational courses for teachers uh, then uh, all our help desk our uh, material uh, our um, files to laser cut you, you can uh, just uh, cut it in your lab, lab to, uh, and you don't need to buy them one more time but you get the drone unassembled That's yes you get drone unassembled and you have all uh, and not only drone and tools too to assemble it. Uh, you know, you, you just take this box, go, I don't know, in park, assemble drone, and then fly. Can you help me now? Uh, how many people do you have um, supporting your communities on the uh, forums? How many employees do you have to put into that job? Uh, you know, uh, it mo- I think it's over 15 people in our company. It's uh, people who work in our uh, educational part of company. Uh, they organized uh, competitions, contests. Uh, they organized courses and uh, they create educational materials. Uh, but, you know, community uh, helps, uh, help, help themselves. Because uh, when we start, uh, we help to every person, but now they ha- help each other. And uh, though we have not so many people uh, to create this community, uh, now it's really big uh, because uh, people want to uh, help each other and want to share their knowledge. And also it's not a forum, it's just a chat, so you can enter yes. this chat, it's a public chat. And Everyone can answer. Yes, but uh, it's in Russian, you know. <laughs> it's not in English. No, no, there was, were some questions in English. Ah, and yes. We can answer in English. Yes. Any other questions? All right, I have two questions, actually. Um, I see that you were trying DroneKit and then MathRobs and ROS. Have you tried the Map SDK? Uh, actually, when we started to design this system, there was no Map SDK. It was about 2017. So, no, no, we haven't tried it. We, we now uh, look to it and we think about it. But now it's Mavros. Right. My second question is, what can this community do to help you and support you in training people? Uh, uh, could you repeat, please? What can this community do for you to help keep supporting you in uh, providing training uh, What can training this community services? do for us? Yes. Ah. You got the main developers here. <laughs> uh, of course, we can see yeah. pull request. A, a lot of Russian students send, n- not a lot, but some Russian students send us pull request. of course. Uh, it's not only uh, the code, it's about the documentation as well. And also what... Oh, mm. the question is about this community. So yes. you can merge all of our PRs immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, if you star our repository, it would be just great for us because we do everything for the stars. <laughs> on of course, it's yeah. a joke, but we are really communicating with some of core developers and we are very grateful for their support and for their aidance in how should we fix some uh, problems. Ah, also, we, we to want to, the core developers to understand more about what we do so they understand um, more our PRs to PX4. <laughs> no, they know what we do, so it's easier to them. And you know... Uh, you can help us maybe to provide uh, an education with drones in your countries, in your cities, in your universities, because uh, it's very interesting for us. You can uh, contact us, maybe uh, write to us. We can help you to uh, start it in your country, your uh, 
city because uh, we believe that education withdraws its future and it can inspire students a lot. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you.